Hello everyone. Welcome to another module on the renal system. In this module, we will discuss about the various congenital anomalies and the congenital pathology of the renal system. The first and the most important congenital anomaly is the Porter sequence or the Porter syndrome. Now we all know that the urine produced in the pregnancy by the fetus is secreted directly in the womb and this urine produces something called as the amniotic fluid okay now when there is dysfunction of the kidney it leads to decreased production of the urine correct which further leads to a decreased production of amniotic fluid now decrease in the amniotic fluid is called as oligohydramnios amniotic fluid is basically responsible for formation of different kind of structures of the body and due to the decrease in the um, amniotic fluid there is compression of these structures these structures includes limb deform facial anomalies example the low set of ears and retrognathesia that is a jaw defect flattened nose these are basically the facial anomalies now the amniotic fluid is also responsible for production of something called as surfactant in the lung okay so when the amniotic fluid decreases there is less amniotic fluid aspirated in the fetal lung which leads to pulmonary hypoplasia am i clear i'll again repeat due to decrease in the amniotic fluid aspiration in the fetal lung there is pulmonary hypoplasia now what are basically the causes of porter sequence or the porter syndrome the most important cause is autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease okay the next important cause is obstructive uropathy example the posterior urethral valves are obstructed okay the next one is bilateral renal agenesis and also chronic placental insufficiency i'll come to all of these in a while okay now this porter sequence is associated with a certain number of symptoms now what are those symptoms pulmonary hypoplasia twisted face twisted skin and extremity defect these are basically the symptoms now what is the cause of porter sequence it is decrease in the amniotic fluid which is also called as oligohydramnios which is the trigger and what happens is there is renal failure in utero which is the major cause of death of the fetus am i clear with the porter sequence now let's go to the next congenital pathology which is called as the horseshoe kidney now what happens is both the kidneys fuse by their inferior pole okay and hence form a horseshoe shape now this happens when the kidneys ascend from the pelvis ascend from the pelvis remember it is ascend from the pelvis during fetal development horseshoe kidney is majorly caused by trapping of inferior mesenteric artery which comes out from the renal artery can you look at this this is the inferior mesenteric artery and it gets trapped under the inferior mesenteric artery the kidneys function normally but they are associated with something called as hydronephrosis renal stones and increased infection and risk of renal cancer so i'll again repeat hydronephrosis renal stones infection and increased risk of renal ca cancer now what are the basic causes of horseshoe kidneys it is majorly caused as a genetic defect that is chromosomal aneuploidy syndrome or trisomies 13 18 and 21 okay on the right hand side we have a x ray of the abdomen which shows horseshoe kidney can you look at this this is the horseshoe kidney this is all about the horseshoe kidney part now let's talk about congenital solitary functional kidney now what is this condition in this condition there is only one functional kidney 
it is majorly asymptomatic till a particular age because the other contralateral kidney takes care of the renal flow but there is a compensatory hypertrophy that means the other kidney enlarges in size and leads to hypertrophy now these anomalies are very common and are often diagnosed prenatally that is during the pregnancy itself via ultrasound okay now what are these the different kinds of these anomalies include unilateral renal urgenesis and multicystic dysplastic kidney okay now what is unilateral renal urgenesis if you remember from the embryology module i told you that if there is a problem in the differentiation or formation of the metanephric mesenchyme okay the metanephric mesenchyme it can lead to different kind of congenital anomalies correct and it is caused by aberrant interactions so when there is aberrant interaction between the uretic uretic bud and the metanephric mesenchyme it leads to complete absence of the kidney and the ureter okay that is called as a unilateral renal urgenesis that means one kidney with the ureter is absent now what is multicystic dysplastic kidney the uretic bud again fails to differentiate of the metanephric mesenchyme these two function together right and when these two do not differentiate it leads to various congenital anomalies now what happens in multicystic dysplastic kidney is there is a non functional kidney which consists of only cysts and connective tissue this is very important cysts and connective tissue are found and it is predominantly non hereditary and it occurs only with one kidney okay if both the kidneys have cyst and connective tissue it can lead to something called as potter sequence that we just discussed is it clear now let's talk about the last two congenital anomaly the first one of this is the duplex collecting system now what happens is the ureteric bud before it enters the metanephric blastema divides into a y shaped bifid okay what happens i'll take you back to this diagram of the embryology module this ureteric bud divides into two parts before it enters the metanephric mesenchyme and hence gives rise to a bifid y shaped ureter okay this duplex collecting system can alternatively occur through two ureteric bud reaching the same metanephric blastema is it clear that means the ureteric bud reaching the metanephric blastema gets divided into two parts it is strongly associated with something called as the vesico ureteral reflex or the ureteral obstruction now what is vesico ureteral reflex the back flow of the urine from the bladder to the kidney is called as vesico ureteral reflex it is also associated with increased risk of urinary tract infections now let's talk about the last congenital anomaly that is the posterior ureteral valves the membrane remnant in the posterior urethra in males majorly in males leads to a persistent ureteral obstruction now what happens is due to the obstruction over here in the posterior ureteral membrane it leads to distension of the bladder on both sides okay which leads to bilateral hydronephrosis caused by vesico ureteral reflex now what happens is urine back flows to the kidney which leads to hydronephrosis on both the sides okay so it is bilateral hydronephrosis and dilated or thick walled bladder on ultrasound so the bladder is also distended when we examine it on the ultrasound the most common cause of bladder outlet obstruction in male infants this is the most common cause okay and it is majorly associated with something called as oligohydramnios we all know what is oligohydramnios okay which leads to further yes potter sequence 
दिस इज द मेजर कॉज ऑफ ब्लैडर आउटलेट ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन इन मेल एंड इन्फेंस प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो इफ यू एन्जॉय द वीडियो प्लीज क्लिक ऑन द लाइक बटन एंड डू सब्सक्राइब टू दिस चैनल लेट मी नो इन द कमेंट सेक्शन बिलो विच टॉपिक्स डू यू वॉन्ट मी टू एक्सप्लेन थैंक यू